Hi, I'm Lisa, a 32-year-old software developer. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more tales from my life. After college, I moved back home to support my aging parents. Here's how that went. Working from home again, Lisa? Mom would ask every morning as she saw me open my laptop at the kitchen table. It was her way of pointing out that she didn't quite approve of my job, even though it was paying the bills. Yeah, Mom. Big project due soon, I'd respond, trying to keep my tone light. It was a daily dance we did, my attempt to bridge her traditional views with my modern employment. Dad was another story. His health had been declining, and as his medical bills grew, so did my responsibilities around the house. Each evening, after logging off from work, I'd sort through bills, coordinate with doctors, and manage our finances. This one's due next week, Lisa. Can we delay it? Dad would ask, his voice weak but hopeful. I'll handle it, Dad. Don't worry. I'd reassure him. Though the truth was, our financial buffer was thinning. Before Mike and Jessica moved in, our home was a balance of tension and care. I managed the stress of caregiving with the flexibility of my job, but that fragile balance was about to be tested. Your brother and Jessica are coming to stay, Mom announced one evening with a tone that suggested this was not up for discussion. They need our help right now. I nodded, masking my apprehension. Sure, Mom. For how long? Just until they get back on their feet, she replied, which in family speak could mean indefinitely. As I closed my laptop that night preparing for the invasion of our already strained space, I couldn't help but worry about how their presence would change the dynamics of our home. Little did I know, the challenges ahead would stretch far beyond sharing a bathroom or fridge space. The day Mike and Jessica moved in, the atmosphere in the house shifted palpably. Boxes and bags cluttered the living room, and their voices filled spaces that were usually quiet during the afternoon. Why is your stuff all over the living room? It's blocking the TV, I mentioned, as I tried to navigate through the chaos after a long day of coding. We'll sort it out soon, Lisa. Just need a place to crash for a bit, Mike responded without looking up from his phone. Jessica, bustling around with her belongings, chimed in without missing a beat. We need some space for my things. The guest room's too cramped. Mom, sensing my irritation, quickly interjected, Lisa, their family, we adjust and make room. As days turned into weeks, not much changed. Their temporary stay seemed increasingly permanent, and Jessica's demands grew more frequent. Can you pick up some groceries on your way back tomorrow? We're running low on a few things, Jessica called out one evening as I was about to shut down my computer. You know, there's a store just down the street from here, I pointed out, tired of the additional errands. Jessica, flicking her hair back, replied sharply, But you're already out and about, aren't you? It's easier if you do it. This routine became the new norm. Mike was off and out, job hunting supposedly, while Jessica seemed content managing her mysterious $1,500 monthly income, which no one dared question openly, until one dinner that changed everything. Dad's medication is running low. We need to reorder, I announced, looking towards Mom. That stuff's expensive, isn't it? How are you managing it all? Jessica asked, her tone curious but edged with something I couldn't place. I kept my voice even. I handle it. But speaking of money, where's your $1,500 coming from every month? Maybe you could chip in. The table went silent. Mike looked from me to Jessica, his expression tense. It's her personal business, Lisa. She doesn't need to explain her finances to anyone, Mike finally said, his voice firm. But she does when it affects us all, I countered feeling the frustration bubble up. We're all stretching thin here, and if there's extra money, why isn't it helping with the household? Jessica's face hardened. I don't appreciate being interrogated about my finances at dinner. Lisa. The conversation ended with dinner plates being cleared more loudly than necessary, and tensions simmering beneath the surface. It wasn't long after that, I found myself increasingly sidelined in my own home, my contributions taken for granted, and my presence barely tolerated. This growing frustration culminated one morning when Jessica handed me a list of bills. Since you're so concerned about finances, you can handle these too, she said, a challenging look in her eyes. As I looked over the list, seeing the mounting expenses, I realized my family home no longer felt like a sanctuary, but a battleground. Each request from Jessica felt like a provocation, each dismissal from Mike a signal that my place in my own home was now on shaky ground. The tipping point came unexpectedly on a rainy Tuesday evening. Everyone was home, a rarity these days, 
with the sound of raindrops setting a somber backdrop to what was about to unfold. Jessica, we need to talk about the $1,500. It's time you explained it to us. Jessica, looking up from her tablet with a frown, replied sharply, Why do you keep bringing this up? It's my money from a personal project. That money could help with the household. We're all struggling here, and you're living under the same roof. Mike, overhearing the conversation, joined in with a tone that brooked no argument. Lisa, drop it. It's none of your business. But it is when the costs of your stay are draining our resources. The argument escalated quickly. Voices raised over the sound of the storm outside. Mom tried to mediate, but to no avail. You're just jealous because you have to work all day, and I managed to secure a steady income without a nine-to-five job. Jessica snapped, her voice dripping with disdain. Jealous? I'm trying to keep this family afloat. If you're part of this family, why won't you contribute? That's enough, Lisa, Mike interjected. You're always stirring up trouble. Maybe it's better if you find another place to stay. The words hit like a slap. This was my home, where I grew up, where I came back to support my aging parents. Yet here I was, being edged out by my own brother and his wife. If that's how you feel, then maybe I should go. But know this, I won't leave our parents unsupported. That night, in the quiet of my room, I took action. I transferred the necessary funds from mom's account to mine, ensuring dad's medical bills would be covered for the next few months. I began packing my things, each item a memory, each memory a sting. The next morning, with my car loaded and my room empty, I confronted Mike and Jessica one last time. I've taken care of dad's bills. I'm not leaving them vulnerable, even if I'm not welcome here. Jessica, arms crossed, had nothing to say, but Mike looked conflicted, perhaps realizing the gravity of the situation too late. As I drove away, the weight of my decision heavy on my shoulders, I knew this was not just an end, but also a beginning, a chance to rebuild my life on my terms, without resentment and constant undermining. Settling into my new apartment was bittersweet. The silence was a stark contrast to the constant noise at my parents' house. As I unpacked, my phone buzzed with a message. It was mom. Can you come over? We need to talk about some bills. I'll visit, but we need to have a clear discussion about financial boundaries. Walking into my old home a few days later felt different, strained. Mike opened the door, his expression tired. Thanks for coming. We're a bit overwhelmed here. Inside, I saw piles of unopened mail and bills scattered on the coffee table. Jessica sat on the couch, scrolling through her phone, barely acknowledging my presence. You need a system to manage these, I said, picking up a bill. Why haven't these been paid? We thought you'd still handle them. Jessica muttered, without looking up. I'm not managing your finances anymore. You both need to step up. Mike sighed, running his hands through his hair. I lost my job last week. It's been tough. You losing your job doesn't mean you can't organize what needs to be paid. Here, I'll show you. I spent the next hour explaining how to budget and prioritize expenses. It was clear they hadn't grasped the full scope of what I had managed before. Later, sitting with Dad in his room, I could see the worry in his eyes. I'm sorry for all this, Lisa. It's not on you, Dad. I'm making sure you're taken care of, but I can't come back here to live. He nodded, understanding yet disappointed. I know, kiddo. Just make sure you're happy. That's what matters. Leaving that day, I felt a mix of emotions. There was guilt for leaving them in a tough spot, relief for escaping the toxicity, and determination to build my own life. Back in my apartment, I focused on enhancing my skills. I took online courses in the evenings, strengthening my qualifications for better job opportunities. Slowly, I began to feel more in control, more like the architect of my own future, my phone would occasionally light up with messages from mom, sometimes veiled requests for help. I offered advice, but kept firm boundaries. It was crucial for their growth and my peace of mind. Months passed, and my new routine became second nature. The calls from home became less frequent, as Mike and Jessica started to handle things on their own, though I heard from neighbors that it wasn't without its bumps. During one of my regular visits to see Dad, I brought some groceries and sat down for coffee with him. You look better. More yourself, Dad noted, smiling weakly. I feel it too. It's been hard, Dad, but I think it was the right decision. It was, Lisa, and we're proud of you, always. As I left that day, seeing Dad smiling and hearing those words of support, 
I knew I had navigated through one of the toughest periods of my life. And while the path was mine alone, the journey impacted us all, hopefully for the better. Walking through the park on a crisp autumn morning, I reflected on the past year. It had been a whirlwind of change and growth, challenging yet rewarding. My phone buzzed, a reminder from my new meditation app. It's funny how small things become part of your healing process. As I settled on a bench, a familiar number flashed on my screen. It was mom, checking in as she did more frequently these days. How are you, mom? How's everything at home? We're managing, Lisa. It's been hard without you, but we're getting by. Mike is learning to handle the finances, slowly. That's good to hear, mom. It's important for him. I know. We miss you, though. Jessica has been helping more around the house. I'm glad to hear that. It's about time everyone plays their part. There was a pause, a breath of silence between us that spoke volumes. You've grown so much, Lisa. We're proud, even if it's from afar. Thanks, Mom. I've learned a lot about myself. I had to step away to find my peace, you know? I know, dear. Just don't forget to visit, okay? I won't, Mom. Hanging up, I felt a sense of contentment. It wasn't without its pangs of guilt, the lingering what-ifs about staying. But my journey taught me the importance of boundaries and self-respect, values I now held dear. Later that week, I met up with a friend who had been through her trials. How did you manage to rebuild after everything? She asked, stirring her coffee thoughtfully. It wasn't easy. There were days I doubted every decision. But stepping away gave me the perspective I needed. I established boundaries that were long overdue. And your family? They struggled initially, which was hard to watch, but it forced them to grow in ways they wouldn't have if I'd stayed and continued to enable the dysfunction. She nodded, understanding the unspoken depth of those challenges. Do you think they learned anything from it all? She probed further. I hope so. At least they've started to take responsibility. It's a long process, but seeing them manage on their own reassures me I made the right decision. As we talked, I realized how far I'd come. The independence I fought so hard for was no longer just about living apart from my family. It was about maintaining my inner peace and ensuring I wasn't lost in the chaos of other people's problems. That night, back in my apartment, I journaled about my experiences. Writing had become a way to process and affirm my feelings. This year has been a journey of self-discovery and asserting my needs. I've learned that sometimes, the hardest decisions lead to the most fulfilling paths. The contrast between my tranquil apartment and the turbulent atmosphere of my parents' house was stark. It reminded me daily of why I needed to forge my path. As I prepared for another week, I felt ready to face whatever challenges might come, knowing that the peace I now enjoyed was built on hard choices and personal growth. Now that our story has come to an end, here's a question to ponder. Is it more important to maintain family harmony at the cost of personal well-being? Or should one prioritize their own peace, even if it means making tough decisions that might upset the family dynamic? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this story compelling, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more engaging content. Your interaction helps us create stories that matter to you. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to hearing your views.